OBS website, download the latest version, and install it and have it set up, which I already have. Once you're going to go there, you're going to want to click on settings. Go to your language you want to speak, English, you know, Spanish, whatever. Go to your encoding settings, very important for people. If you are now able to stream at at least 2000 bit rate, in my opinion, you're not going to have a good looking stream. People are not going to want to watch unless you're a really attractive girl with big boobs. So if you can't stream at least at 2000 bit rate, it might be time to upgrade your internet or at least upgrade your computer or even both in most cases. So 2000 bit rate is going to be a low quality 720p stream most of the time. If you want to have a good looking 720p, you want to do 2500 bit rate. If you want to have a clean 720p or, or a decent quality 1080p, you're going to, want to go 3000 bit rate or above. But I would recommend at least 10 megabyte MPS internet or higher to stream at that. And don't forget, if the higher your bit rate is going to be, the harder it's going to be for other people with slower internet to watch. So you don't want to put something too insane or too crazy. Like if you have an insane upload, 9000 bit rate is going to be looking insanely nice. But it's going to be requiring people to load that up. So I'd recommend anywhere from 2000 to 3500 max for like a really high rate 1080p stream. In my opinion, 3000 bit rate at 720p looks gorgeous and everyone can watch it and no one has any complaints. If you have 10 megabyte internet or better, this is ideal. For your broadcaster settings, uh, right now you have your option to live stream with Hitbox TV or Twitch TV or the two I'm going to show you today. And if you select Hitbox TV, you need a stream key which you get from their website. So in order to do that, you go to your Hitbox account. Uh, whatever your login name is, I made the name QuadGK. And it has uh, downloaded and even instructions on their website how to set it up. But all you need to do is go to your live stream and go to your details and select the title of your stream, the game you're going to be playing. And you want to show your stream key here. This is the stream key you want to input in the settings on Hitbox. I will not be using these settings. I'm going to generate a new key, guys. So even if you have my key, it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and do this and make another one so it's going to be different. So I'm going to go copy and paste it into OBS. For Hitbox TV, this is the key you need to live stream with Hitbox TV. Twitch TV is very similar on Twitch TV. So I change it to Twitch TV. Same thing, you go to your dashboard. You're going to go ahead and uh, this is my live key. Hit Steam key and hit Show key on your username, your dashboard, I'm logged in. This is the Steam key. You want to be really important that you copy and paste this exactly. You don't want to have an extra space because a lot of times people do this. Copy and paste that with the reset key and that's not going to work. You want to make sure you get it here from start to finish, whatever your key is going to be. Again, this is not going to be my key, guys. So I'm going to reset the key to something different regardless. Okay. So again, once you have the key, you're going to input it here. Copy and paste it in the Steam Path key here as well. And the great thing about uh, Twitch is that they've also built the thing to optimize your settings. So you can click on Optimize to see how you want your Twitch TV to be set. Hitbox does not offer that at the time. So you have your key for there. You hit Apply and OK. I'm actually live streaming right now to file output because I'm making a YouTube video. But those are the same settings there. So when you're going to go to do is set your video for your correct video cards. I have a GTX 770. You want to make sure you have your latest and greatest video drivers, guys. Very important. ATI NVIDIA, regardless of what you have, have your latest drivers. Make sure that they're stable. You want to have the latest and greatest. You can go ahead and set your stream right now. I'm doing a 1080p stream, so that's set for 1080p. You can go ahead and do a 720, 620, whatever res you want to do. I have an 8 to 5 aspect radio, so it's kind of weird. That's why you don't see the exact uh, 1080p streams. So if we were to just go monitor one, you can set to whatever resolution you want it to be. So that's how you change your resolution there in your settings. In your audio keys, you can set your uh, desktop boost or mic boost. This is actually important. So if your game is not loud enough, you can increase the volume on your game on your desktop sounds. Or if you have a really low sounding mic, you can increase your mic sounds. Set to whatever you feel uh, needs to be boosted above the other. If your mic's not loud enough, your game's not loud enough, you want to set it up here in the audio section. Again, you have hotkeys for setting up different uh, push talk or muting your mic. You can set special hotkeys if you want to mute, talk to someone on your team speak, start your stream, turn off your stream. I would recommend actually not doing this because you don't actually want to start your stream when you're not actually on it or using it. So it doesn't really make sense to, to accidentally hit the wrong key and start your stream when you're doing something you shouldn't be. For example, looking at porn or something like that. You don't want to do it. In advanced, these are the different uh, system settings. 
you have a really fast computer, you can set your priority class to ab above normal, and this will make your encoding be a little more uh, CPU intensive. So if you have a four gigahertz or higher, I'd recommend above normal, but normal is fine for most people who want to stream, as long as you set your CPU prefences to very fast and your profile to high. So you can, uh, OBS will actually automatically check some of these different key uh, settings for you, but you can pretty much leave this default and you'll be fine with that. And then there's also different encoding if you're using video coding or using a different type of coding type for your de uh, device card. You can set your bit rate and your accuracy and lock stuff in with these settings. Uh, I really don't think you need this quit sync enabled for most live streamers on Twitch, so it's kind of not really going to help you much. But one thing I want to mention is the microphone noise gate. Uh, my biggest issue I have is, I don't know if you can hear me, I breathe a lot. I have a broken nose, so you hear me like breathing and stuff. So I set my open threshold to a little bit lower so you don't pick up on all my breathing and all my really, really fast talking. So I modify my threshold to find out what works best for you. You can test this in streams and your chats say, okay, does my voice sound good? Does my game sound good? Let me see if I need to modify it. I hear you breathing too much. I can't hear you. You can adjust your threshold on your microphone, on your close and open. Just playing with these settings will probably be your best uh, bet to make those changes. And then you're going to hit apply and okay. The next thing you want to do is add scenes. Currently, I have a scenes already set up. So for your game capture, you want to go ahead and create, add a new scene and name it. I already called this one scene. You can have multiple scenes for different games. So you want to have, you know, Counter-Strike, League of Legends, you know, wow, whatever games or even like background or AFK. You can set all those up and change them as needed by just clicking on them or even setting hotkeys if you want as well. And the main thing you want to do, since I'm making a video, I have it on my monitor one, but if I want to add a game, I can do a game capture or I can do a monitor capture. You can capture the game with your monitor or do a game capture. One thing people ask me all the time is, I do a game capture, but I'm greeted with a black screen. How do I fix this black screen issue? Well, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to go to your NVIDIA control panel and click on your manage 3D settings. Very important that you add your, this program, open broadcast software, to your 3D settings. Because the software is not at it, it will just black screen and not work correctly. I believe that ATI has a similar tool that you want to add the 3D setting programs to make it available to you. So add Open Broadcaster in your programs to be customized, to be allowed to be used in 3D settings. Add it, and that should fix your black screen issues. I know I had a lot of questions on my first OBS video on I have a black screen, what I do, how do I fix it? This is how to fix it on an NVIDIA graphics card is in the 3D settings. So once that's added, you can go ahead and add the game capture. For a game capture, you're gonna wanna be running your game. So for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and start Counter-Strike. It's gonna black screen for a second because I haven't added it. So I launched my Counter-Strike game, right? So now I have my Counter-Strike game here. I'll go ahead and actually uh, remove this and re-add it for you guys. So for Counter-Strike, I'm gonna go add game capture, right, CSGO. And you notice, see how it shows up in my application here? I have all my different stuff running. I only want to capture Counter-Strike Go. You can set it for a hotkey if you want. You can adjust your gamma. So if you're playing a really dark game, you can increase your volume on it. I'm um, sorry, volume. Your uh, your gamma on it, up or down. So you want it darker, you want it lighter, you can adjust this for playing night or day games. For This will only show for people on the who are watching you. So I won't adjust your game. It will just show on this application. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit CSGO, but you notice it actually you can't see a CSGO because I'm not actually in it because I'm capturing the monitor. But if I take the monitor off, the CSGO will show. For instance, it will black screen and I launch CSGO because I don't have it open. That's why I black screen. And I would want to go ahead and actually, I'm running a low resolution in game. So that's why it looks really small. So you want to set to whatever resolution your monitor has in game. You can stretch the monitor capture or change it in settings for that. So that's how to get your game to capture with game cap. So I actually want to go back to monitor and see I'm capturing my monitor and my game right now. So I'm going to take CSGO off, watch, I just de-tick it. Now you no longer see CSGO. And you notice I click it back, you won't see it until I relaunch the game. So you don't have to capture a monitor if you don't feel like it. If you just want to capture a game only, you can just set yourself up for just game capture only. And if you want to add a webcam, webcams are under video capture devices. So you want to call it webcam. And I have my Logitech webcam plugged in. Again, one thing really important about these webcams people don't realize is a lot of these webcams have built-in microphones. So if you don't have a microphone on your headset or want to use your microphone on your webcam, you can set that up to use it this way. That's done in this section right here. Very important. And again, you can adjust your gamma, your light, 
you know, set your FPS, set a custom resolution. I'll actually go really small. I know I'm pretty handsome, but we'll go kind of small because I don't want to blow your mind on how handsome I am. So we'll go ahead and set it really small and set it for 30 frames. And you hit OK. I'm actually already using this device. I'm going to have to actually... Uh, I already have a setup here as web. So I'm going to click on... Uh, I don't know why I can't click it. There it goes. I did it a bunch of times. So there's me. Looking handsome. Got the goatee going on. And I have the, my webcam set on my bottom part. You can adjust this by going to... You can uh, want to also move this up. If your webcam ever disappears in your game, it goes in order. Like So I want webcam, game, monitor. So you can actually move this up or reposition it as needed. I think with the order, move up, order, move up. So you want to have your webcam, and then you want to have your overlay, then the game. So it'll all stack on top of each other, like stacking, you know, boom, on top, on top, stacking. And you can also move your webcam and reposition it with this position and sizes. You could crop it, set it to however you want. You can move it for different games. So if you have a game you want to be in this corner, or if you're a girl, I recommend having your webcam be really big. If you're you know, attractive girl, have a big webcam, but don't have it be in the way to be on top. So you can webcam if you want. You can uh, set up different uh, icons. So if you have like a special picture or something, you can add your images, your image slideshow. You can capture. This is already doing monitor capture here. If you go to properties, I'm setting up my monitor capture in my second monitor. I have it doing a subregion, and it's capturing it this way. So I'm capturing everything on my monitor to be streamed on Twitch TV, Hitbox, or even making for YouTube videos. So that's why this program is so great. And then you can also set up different uh, options, change your screens, your settings, and you're good to go. This is really easy to use, guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave a note in the video below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And have fun streaming, and have a great night.